everyone and welcome back to another video on chasing the illusion. In today's video, we're just gonna calm it down a little bit. There's not gonna be any tricks, there's not gonna be any tutorials. I'm just gonna go through my card collection. Now, I don't think I've done a card collection ever. Um, it's ever growing and it is quite small compared to other people's car collections uh, because I usually just pick the ones that I would use and the ones that I would like and you'll see what kind of vibe I go for uh, when we go through the cards themselves. It is also the return of the second camera so you can get a nice little close-up of all the, uh, the cards that I'll be showing you in this video. Um, so without any further ado, let's just get on with the first deck of cards. And the first deck of cards that I'll be showing you is my latest addition to the card collection. After this deck of cards, we will be moving it down. Um, you'll see on the uh, on the on, on my little display all the, uh, the, uh, the the tiers and where they're all at. So um, this one's out of the ordinary. From here on in, we will go down the tiers. But first, we have got the Cherry Devil's Advocate. Not to be mistaken with the Red Advocate deck. Um, this is the Cherry's uh, Cherry Advocate deck of cards. Um, and it comes in a box of two um, you also get a nice little red box with it um, and it comes with this deck of cards and the uh, advocate deck of cards that says don't play cards with the devil um, this is an advocate deck um, i won't tell you the secret uh, for obvious reasons um, but yeah so i actually got two of these so i got one which is the advocate that i always have um, a play deck and what well, for a spare deck and then the one that I just showed you just there so that is the newest edition and that goes on the uh, advocate shelf that you will see on the screen so on the top tier of the shelf uh, I'm not going to get them all down because they're not the cards that I usually use they're just old cards that I usually have just keep them in my wallet as spares um, just ones that I don't mind ruining either apart from the one on the very top which is my first ever deck of cards um, I've also done a video on them um, you can check it out if you so wish so that's all I can really say about the first tier it's like it's the top tier it's the one that I don't usually go to that much um, they're the cards I don't really care about ruining or losing moving on to the second tier and we have got the 52 deck of cards. This was probably the first deck of cards that uh, that I backed on Kickstarter. Let's say, um, yeah, I, yeah, you know, this like it's quite a it's quite a simple design. There's not much uh, to talk about with them, um, but they, I really like the number 52 for obvious reasons, and. Uh, and I just thought it's such a simple design, I needed to get it and also it was for a good course, you know, it was a small little uh, company. Um, they did bring out a, I think they were going to talk about bringing out a red version, so instead of the black it was going to be red. Um, but they never did it, I don't think, so I, I keep up to date on them just to see and they never did because I'd really like a red version of this. So Next up is probably the deck of cards that I've been using most regularly and that is the uh, dystopian deck. Um, I've, I've mentioned this deck multiple times, I even did a video on this deck of cards. I went to a fort that I live quite near, um, it's quite rustic and it's really cool. And um, yeah, these are the cards that I've been spending most of my time with recently. I've got quite a lot, quite a couple of these decks. Um, I've even got the, uh, the, uh, the prototype dystopian decks in difference there. And uh, also the, um, the dark dystopian deck is also coming out. So um, I'll leave the link to that Kickstarter project as well um, in, the, in the description uh, because the dark dystopian deck looks so cool and I really, really want it. So um, yeah, go check that one out. Next up are these bad boys, the Super Knock V2s. Um, I, first of all, I got these deck, this deck of cards just because I'm a massive superhero nerd. Um, if you've seen in a couple of the backgrounds of my videos, I've got a lot of superhero stuff. Um, and I really liked them. What I didn't know is that the knock playing cards are fully marked. Well, I say fully marked, they're not fully marked, but they're, they're marked cards. And it took me forever to actually realise that they're marked. Um, 
So yeah, I've just kept them around. I really like them. Again, it's such a simple design. You'd never know they were marked, right? Just by looking at the back. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I've kept them around. They're a bit, I don't know, I've had them for a while now. They're a little bit clunky. Um, but hey, I really like them. I don't use them that much unless I'm like doing a, like, a nerdy kind of thing or I'm wearing a nerdy top or a Batman top. Um, but I really like them still. Um, I just love like when they came, they had all of these like little cracks and stuff in them and like the more they've been used the more cracks have generally like formed naturally so it just looks more rustic and so much cooler already now moving on to one of my first ever deck of cards that i purchased and it's the little deck of horrors i would say this this deck of cards probably means quite it's probably up there in one of my favorite deck of cards not because of the design i'm not a great lover of the design if i'm honest but I did a video very, very early on in my Magic career with this deck of cards, and um, and and it is probably the thing that hit me off and got me creatively creating. Um, <laughs> yeah, it made me creative in these deck of cards. I just love the fact they open up this way. It says Bill on them. They've got so like all the all the court cards are different. You know, they've all got like different things on them. You know, it's got Frankenstein on I absolutely love this deck of cards. Um, not by looks alone, but just the idea of it and how much it means to me in my heart. You know, I uh, hate to be soppy, but there you go. The next two cards are the Theory 11 uh, Star Wars playing cards. Um, so you've got the dark version and you've got the light version. I also did a video with these two cards as well. Um, it's not my favourite video I've ever created, if I'm completely honest, but I do love these cards. Again, I'm a massive nerd, not just with superheroes, but with uh, Star Wars as well. I absolutely love Star Wars. Um, and I love Theory 11 playing cards as well. So when I saw that they were bringing out Star Wars playing cards, I had to get them. Um, I'm yet to get the uh, the other version of the Star Wars decks. You know that they did like a um, like a darker version of it, and I didn't get the Mandalorian deck either. Um, I'm not saying I never will, but currently, um, you know, I've seen reviews on them and stuff like that. Um, I wasn't a big fan of them, if I'm completely honest, just by looking at them. Like they're just the the, the dark versions, whatever they're called. They're like just reprints of these, and then the Mandalorian deck. I think they they missed a lot of opportunities with it. Um, being such a nerd myself and I love the show uh, I didn't really fancy getting them but I do love these two decks of cards the light version and the dark version don't know which one's my favourite but um, probably, the, probably the, the red version because it, it looks cooler in my opinion between the blue and the red so right we've clearly gotten into the uh, theory 11 side of things i've also got the 007 theory 11 playing cards again i absolutely love this deck of cards not just the feel i love the feel of all theory 11 playing cards um but I, like the feel's great but also the little innuendos that they have in the decks i really wanted to create a video with this deck but i never got around to doing it so maybe in the future i will but yeah even like all the cool cards and stuff have like um, certain like weapons that they used in the movie. Obviously, No Time to Die is coming out soon. Soon. Um, so I'm definitely going to go and watch that in the cinema, and um, <laughs> I'll be taking these cards out with me. Maybe perform a couple of tricks to some people before the show. And again, another Theory 11 deck. This one is the Avengers deck. Again, I did a video on this Avengers deck, so I won't go into too much detail. But massive nerd again. Theory 11 wants to make an Avengers deck, I'm going to get it. Not just one, but multiple <laughs> decks of them. But yeah, I did a video on this deck of cards, so if you want to check it out, be my guest. Right, now I believe this is my last of the Theory 11 decks. Um, this is the Darren Brown playing cards. It looks like a book, it looks so cool. Um, it's a little bit haggard at the top now because I've had these for a while, but uh, Darren Brown is one of my biggest influences when it comes to mentalism and magic and just showmanship in general. So um, I think I did a video on these as well, I can't really remember. Uh, but yeah, I love this deck of cards. I don't use it that much, um, I don't know why because again the feel's great. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know why I don't use it. I, you know what, after this video I'm going to go out and I'm going <laughs> to perform with this deck more. And next up is my Hufflepuff Harry Potter playing cards. Um, I absolutely love this deck so much. Um, I got multiple ones for a certain trick that I did. I am Team Hufflepuff, of course, you know, 
when it comes to the Hogwarts houses, I am Hufflepuff, so sorry anyone if I offend anyone by saying that. Um, I love this deck of cards. I especially love, if you look closely, it says Alamora there, because that's how you open up the deck of cards. It unlocks it there, and then you open it up here. I absolutely love that. Like, that's how it opens up, because if you push it up, like, like oh, I pushed it up a bit too much now. But, um, yeah, if you push it down and you lock it like that, it can't open. So you've got to basically say Alamora for it to, to open up. Um, I've seen a lot of reviews on other Harry Potter playing cards. Um, I got this from the official Harry Potter store um, in the actual, like, the proper London store and stuff. So um, these are actually really good quality playing cards. I do use these quite often as well. Um, not just when I'm being nerdy and Harry Pottery, but um, because the feel of these are actually really great. So yeah, these are the Hufflepuff Harry Potter playing cards. Probably one of the videos that I had the most fun making um, was with this deck of cards, the Billie Eilish playing cards. Um, the feel's not great, uh, the tuck box is not great, <laughs> but you know, I'm a massive Billie Eilish fan if nobody knows. And um, using this deck of cards um, and creating a music video, well, not even a music video, but just making a video with these deck of cards, um, incorporating Billie Eilish's style and stuff, um, I really enjoyed doing that. So, yeah, this is the Billie Eilish playing cards. Okay, so now we're moving down to the next tier, which is like the Madison tier, as I would call it. Um, starting off with the Madison Trawlers. Um, I really like this deck. I never got the um, the the other deck when it goes straight away to the edge. Um, these were actually given to me um, as a as a Alliance member. So um, yeah, I really like this deck of cards. Again, the feels great. Um, feels great, and like all the little secrets and stuff in there, I absolutely love as well. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is about um, Madison playing cards. I think it's because I use these cards so much. Um, I just love the feel of them. Uh, I'm not just saying that because, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely just love the feel of, 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 of these cards and all of the ones that are going to be on this shelf as well. So um, we'll just stop there and just let you guys know how much I love the feel for the rest of the coming cards. Yeah. Okay, so next is the iconic Pink Madison Advocates. Again, uh, these are iconic because of like the ones that have been seen the most and you know Madison's color is like one of his main colors that he uses part of black and white is pink um, Out of all the colors obviously if you've watched Madison videos, you know why uh, the color pink is important and stuff um, But yeah, I love this deck of cards um, It's great to just like do poses with and stuff like that because it's so out there um, a lot of people look really confused when they see a pink deck of cards as well, which I really like. Next is the Blue Sky Advocates. Um, this one in general is not actually opened. I do have another one that I opened up, but I actually destroyed it for a trick um, that I performed to people. It's a shame that I never actually videoed it because like, I've ruined that deck of cards now, but it's fine because I always get a spare. Um, but yeah, I love using this deck of cards, um, especially for like summery days or when it's hot. To know it just looks really refreshing um, to you. So that's that's why I use this deck of cards in the summer. Br brilliant, brilliant British weather. We never have a good summer. So um, these haven't been out. These haven't been opened yet, apart from the time that I did actually use them for a trick. So yeah. And next is the misprint advocates. As you can see, um, it is very misprinted. It's supposed to be like that. If you picked up the misprinted advocates, then you know why, you know all the little secrets in there and the other deck of cards that you get, which I won't say on camera again. Um, but yeah, I love this trick. I recently did a stage show for the first time ever, and uh, I performed this, this trick with this deck of cards. Literally, all I had on the stage was a couple of books and this deck of cards and uh, people were so shocked when I performed this trick with it. So, um, yeah, this probably has a little place in my heart just because uh, of the trick that uh, on stage that I did for the first time ever. So, yeah. The next three cards are without doubt my most favorite decks of cards I've ever owned. Um, I'll, put, I'll put some of them down first just so we can show you, and they are the, uh, the Remedies. So this is the green Remedies signed by Daniel Madison. Um, this is the blue Remedies signed by Daniel, Mas Ma Daniel Madison. I've also got two, uh, another deck of these two as well, unsigned, because these have never been opened. These are just 
my display ones. I'm probably never gonna open these ones unless I completely ruin uh, the blue and the green ones that I have that aren't signs. Um, and amazingly, the red ones are my complete favorite deck of cards out of all of them. Um, it's got prime position right in the middle of my display as well. Um, I absolutely love this deck of cards. <laughs> It's the only one that's not signed, and it's uh, the only one I don't have a duplicate of, which, I, in a way, like I have thought about getting another one, but in a way, I kind of feel like this, this, this deck makes it even more special, knowing that I need to look after this deck of cards, or the one time that I will destroy these deck of cards, because at the end of the day, all cards get destroyed. Um, the one time is gonna be quite a, a sacrificial process for me, like a spiritual process, so, um, this is definitely by far my favorite deck of playing cards. And next up is the original Devil's Advocate. So just like uh, this one, it is completely exactly the same, exactly the same trick, only inverted colors. This is the original one, and this is the new one. Uh, this is actually probably, I think it was actually, this was the first ever uh, Madison deck of cards that I ever got. Um, so again, this probably holds a little space, little space in my heart. Um, it is it's very clumpy now because like I used it so much as soon as I got Madison cards I was like ah, I'll play with them um, so obviously I know the stock's changed along the uh, along the year or so that he's been bringing out the advocates but this is probably my first ever deck of cards that I got um, from Daniel Madison so that holds uh, a lot of these cards are holding like something in my heart um, I never really thought about it that much, but obviously cards do obviously mean a lot to me. Um, so yeah, this is my first ever Madison deck of cards. Okay, and the last two on this shelf, these aren't the last two Madison decks I've just realized, but these are the last two uh, on the shelf, like the Advocate editions. Um, so we've got the black and we've got the whites. Um, I've got an Advocate of the black ones, not an Advocate of the white ones, I don't think. Um, I am. I really like the white ones. I wish I got another deck of the white. I don't know. Did I get another deck of the white? I don't know. I'll check after with this. But um, yeah, I uh, love these ones. I like mixing and matching with the two of them. I think they really like play off really, really well together with the black and the white exactly the same, just interconnected. I really like the, these, these cards together and they look great on the shelf together as well, in my opinion. So Okay, and now we move into the final tiers, the final little column. Um, this is the Flux playing cards. I re again, this is probably one of the first decks that I bought. Um, it says like, uh, think outside the box with what's inside the box. Um, this is like a cardistry deck. Um, it's like, so whenever I'm practicing cardistry, it's probably not great considering like I practice cardistry with these ones and considering it's a cardistry deck. But they feel really great for cardistry. They are a bit clumpy now because I've had them for ages and I do play with them an awful lot. I just love the way they look when you spin them around. I mean, you're probably not going to see it that well, but like when you spin it around, like, yeah, you're not going to see that. Um, yeah, I just love the way they look um, when you're playing with cards doing cardistry. Um, I don't think I ever did make a video of these, which is a shame. Again, it, to be fair, they're probably a bit too clumpy to make like a cool little video of them now, but hey, these are the Flux playing cards. Next up, we have got, I think this is my only illusionist deck of cards that I own, uh, which says a lot to be fair, considering a lot of the things that I do use, like props and stuff, are from illusionist. Uh, illusionist. Um, we've got the Cohorts deck, and this is a marked deck of cards. Um, out of all those decks that I've shown you, I think like, this one and the Nox are the only Mark deck that I've got, um, unless I've like modified the deck of cards itself to be a Mark deck, which I have done on some of them. Um, but yeah, this is a Mark deck of cards. I'm not sure on the quality of the feel. I mean, they feel great, they feel okay, but like compared to like Theory 11 and, and, and Madison playing cards, um, these just, I don't know. I don't want to speak that. And you know what, I will. They don't feel as great, but they are marks. They do help an awful lot, especially like with like mentalism and stuff. So yeah. Again, one of my newest additions is the Skull and Dagger playing cards. I love the little things that they have on the faces of the cards. Um, I know a lot of magicians or, or card people aren't a fan of when decks of cards have things on the front. Um, but I really like the little quotes and stuff they have on the cards. Um, I'm also a big fan of the back design. Uh, let's see if I can get out. I'm really a big fan of the back design. Uh, I really want to make a video on these as well, to be fair. Um, 
maybe I will in the future, who knows. Um, but yeah, and these, this deck of cards is definitely aimed for magicians as well because it comes with a lot of gaffes, comes with a lot of tricks inside the uh, deck as well. Uh, so yeah, this deck um, is probably up there in my favourite one so far, maybe because it's new. Um, I don't know how the feeling is after a couple of times using it because they are still new, but yeah, this is the Skull and Dagger playing cards. All right, so my main camera decides to completely die on me. Should have charged up a little bit more. Not to worry, good job I set up the second camera. Um, we're near the end anyway, so it's not that much of an issue. Um, the next cards that I am going to show you is the uh, four first playing cards that I own. I know there's five, I know there's five, and I kick myself every single time that I talk about these. Um, so first of all, I've only got the V2, the V3, and the two V4 cards that they brought out. I never got the V1 cards. Um, I did get um, one singular signed playing card from Chris Ramsey, uh, which was the V1 <laughs> cards. Um, so technically I do have a V1 card, but I don't have a V1 deck, which annoys me every single day. Um, this is like, this was probably the most expensive card that I ever bought um, when they were all, like when I was starting out. Um, I absolutely love Chris Ramsey, I still do. And um, yeah, this is the card that I got. And then obviously I, I really like the design change on the uh, V3s. And then he decides to switch everything up on the, uh, the V4s. Um, I did make a video on these over on CTISS, so if you haven't, if not part of CTISS, it's completely free, you get behind the scenes stuff. I'm not gonna go into it, I talk about it every single video. Um, it's completely up to you if you wanna join it. But I did make a little review on these deck cards over on CTISS months ago, so yeah. And the next one is the Contra brand playing cards. Um, I love the storytelling in this deck of cards. Um, you know, I know these, these are Fury 11 as well. I said the, I said this, but like I've done the Fury 11 cards, but yeah, this is Fury 11 as well. I completely forgot about that. Um, again, getting a bit clumpy. I've used them for ages now. Um, I love the storytelling of these cards. I'm not a huge fan of design. I just love the storytelling and the questions I always get asked whenever I use these cards. So. Um, I've had these for ages now, yeah, I completely forgot it was Fury 11, but yeah, the Contraband playing cards. And the last two deck of cards that I'll be showing you today is the two Dead Man's deck. Uh, you can hear the difference. You can hear the difference um, due to this one having a complete bullet in there and bullet holes all the way through, and this one being the unharmed edition, it also says it right there. I did a video on both these decks of cards, so when I got this deck of cards first, I did a video on them, and then when I got these cards second, I did another video with these. Um, they really hit off really well, I really like the deck of cards. They, uh, again, with the storytelling and stuff like that, I am, I've got an idea that moulds these two tricks together as well. Obviously I did one for the video, um, but like one for real well, because that was a camera trick, so I hate to like, break it to you, but the tricks that I use in these tricks are camera tricks. Um, but I've got an idea that uses these decks of cards in the real world that moulds these two together, which I'm still in the process of creating, so um, I'll come back to you when it's done. And that's it, that's all my deck of cards. On the final tier is just um, like signed cards um, and gaff cards like the uh, Angle Z cards that I have for the uh, remedies. Um, so there's not really much point showing you them because in a lot of like Madison cards uh, I get, they come with signed cards. I've got some from Cavan Booth who, uh, who's got the uh, dystopian deck coming out. Um, and the original red dystopian decks as well, and obviously the dark dystopian decks is what I'm talking about. Um, so, you know, and obviously I've got a Chris Ramsey first playing card one that I spoke to you about as well. So, um, I won't show you all of them because it's no point, but that is the end of the video. Make sure you check out my Instagram, check out CTISS for the behind the scenes stuff. And obviously subscribe to this channel if you so wish, it's completely up to you. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video, I know it's gone on for a bit longer than usual, but there's a lot of cards to go through. Maybe next year I'll do another one, see how things have changed, see what ones are still in my display. But that is the end of the video, hope you enjoyed. Adios everyone, goodbye.
Okay, so in hindsight, I completely forgot of these decks of cards, the Chateaus, the Strangers, and the Black Strangers as well. Um, I think it's because we moved on from the first playing cards and then straight on to the last two. Completely forgot about the middle ones. Uh, but I did also say in the video that there was a... Um, uh, other Madison cards in the collection as well. These are the other Madison cards. I love these ones, hence why they're in the middle. Same with the Remedies, hence why they're in the middle. Um, yep, yeah, so the Black Strangers are here, the Madison Strangers Chateau, Madison Strangers Chateau, Madison Chateau Strangers are here, the Advocate Strangers are here, and then the inverted one of these two are here too. So I just thought, sorry to, uh, to to miss out these ones in the video, but there you go, they're there now. That's the end of the video, the proper end of the video. And uh, see you later, bye.